Hello to our listeners and to our viewers. My name is Michal Chatuel Radoshitsky. I'm a research fellow at INSS. Lately, we've been hearing about growing and bolder manifestations of anti-Semitism, which should perhaps be viewed in a larger context of increased nationalism, the spread of COVID-19, with major economic implications, immigration waves, and polarization in societies all across the world. At INSS, we are currently engaged in an extensive and comprehensive research looking at anti-Semitism in the United States. And with me today is Elan Carr, who is the United States Special Envoy to monitor and combat anti-Semitism. Welcome, Special Envoy Elan Carr. Well, thank you, Michal. And thank you, INSS, for everything that you do, your excellent work to, um, to make the Jewish people stronger and to make our world better. It's an honor to be with you, and, and I want to thank all of your listeners and viewers for being with us at this moment. Thank you. So in this role as a special advisor, I understand that you advise the Secretary of State and you're responsible for directing U.S. policies and projects aimed at countering anti-Semitism throughout the world. But can you please explain to our listeners and our viewers what this actually means? What do you do when you wake up in the morning and fight to make the world a better place, rid of anti-Semitism? Well, to do that, I have to wake up early, which I do. <laughs> And uh, you know, our, our, our day, it's not only me, it's my team. You know, it's very, it's very, sometimes we find ourselves reacting to situations in the world. Maybe an anti-Semitic attack somewhere in the world against a Jewish community. Sometimes it's a statement or a movement, an anti-Semitic movement that, that does something appalling or makes a statement that has to be properly addressed and condemned. But in addition to reacting to developments in the world, it's extremely important that we maintain our strategic focus and that we continue to keep our eye on the ball and to push forward those major initiatives that over the long run will roll back this awful rise in Jew hatred that we're seeing all over the world. Um, that's the mandate I have from my boss, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, and it's the priority of the Trump administration. And so, Michal, in addition to those reactive moments, we are engaged in a number of really important initiatives that, uh, that aim to roll back the rise in anti-Semitism around the world. Do you want to tell us a bit about them? Sure, absolutely. So uh, we are, uh, we're focused on, first of all, physical security. Because if Jews don't feel safe, you can't have quality of life. And so one of my top diplomatic engagements is ensuring that Jewish communities and Jewish community assets around the world are protected and are safe. Second of all, hate crimes prosecutions. I'm a former prosecutor and I know well how important it is that the law enforcement community send that signal by appropriately punishing uh, hate crimes, that, that committing a crime for the purpose of, of exhibiting racial or ethnic or religious hatred and targeting a, a specific community for that reason is worse than a crime committed for other reasons. And so hate crimes prosecution is a big topic. I've met with prosecutors and law enforcement leaders around the world, in the United States, but also in countries in Europe. We brought together, for example, we brought um, law enforcement leaders from seven separate German states to talk about how better to investigate, prosecute, and appropriately punish hate crimes. Very important. A third initiative is the, the IRA definition, the definition of anti-Semitism put forth by the International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance. You know, how can you confront a threat without first defining it? Well, but we already have a vehicle for defining anti-Semitism. It's a standard accepted definition. More and more countries are adopting it. Many around the world have adopted it. And so if a country hasn't, it's one of my top diplomatic asks that that country adopt that definition. It's power, Micha, is that not only does it capture through the examples it gives the traditional, you know, we might call it medieval type of anti-Semitism, but it also captures what's often called the new anti-Semitism. It's actually not new, but often seen as new. And that's the anti-Semitism that focuses on, on Zionism and the hatred of the state of Israel. And so the IRA definition is critically important. Another initiative that we're focused on is the internet and social media. 
in, the internet hasn't caused anti-Semitism, let's be clear, but it is the chief vector of this global disease. Now, the, the ideological camps from which Jew hatred is emanating, you know, the far right ethnic supremacists, the radical left Israel haters, the militant Islam, all three camps are using the internet and social media to great effect to drive their ideologies throughout the world and to recruit and radicalize adherents. It's a critical problem that we have to address. I'm proud to say I'm the first special envoy in this position to have a principal member of my team, an assistant special envoy, who focuses exclusively on the challenge of internet and online anti-Semitism. So those are our initiatives, but there's one more, and one more very important one. Each of these measures are inherently defensive, and that's appropriate because you know, anti-Semitism is an onslaught, an attack against the Jewish people, and you have to defend against attacks. But as everyone knows, you can't win a war if all you do is play defense. You can't even win a football game if all you do is play defense. And so the last initiative I want to mention to you, Michal, is, is the way that we go on the offense, on the attack against anti-Semitism. And that is by driving a philo-Semitic narrative, driving a, a, a narrative that, that, that breeds affection for the Jewish people, that teaches the value of the Jewish story and the contributions of the Jewish people and the values of Judaism to the world. You can't tell the history of the United States or of, or of Poland or, or Russia or England or France or Germany without talking about what Jews have brought to those countries in its history. And so this last initiative is incredibly important and it's, it's the way we drive, we turn the tables on this war against anti-Semitism and we actually drive a narrative that breeds affection and appreciation and understanding of the Jewish people, the Jewish story, Jewish history, and Jewish values. And so that's what we're doing. Uh, we're between those initiatives and, and reacting and confronting anti-Semitic incidents around the world, my team and I are very busy, but we're very optimistic that we will be able to roll this back with the incredible support we have from President Trump and Secretary Pompeo. So I'll, I'll take you on that last point, right? You are working under Secretary Pompeo in the State Department, but I want to try ask to, to, to move the shift a bit internally to the United States and ask you, as a United States citizen who is living, you know, in, within the Jewish community, you're part of the Jewish community, how do you perceive anti-Semitism inside the United States today? And especially in comparison, you have the tools to be able to compare what's happening in the United States with what's happening in the rest of the world. So what is your taking on that? So the, the United States, and polls are very clear about this, the United States is the most philo-Semitic country in the history of the world. Um, Jews are not tolerated in America. They're embraced and treasured in America. And the vast, vast majority of Americans have favorable views toward the Jewish people. Now, the United States is led by the most philo-Semitic administration we've ever had. We talked about President Trump and Secretary Pompeo and the incredible uh, work they've done to stand up for the Jewish people throughout the world and to fight anti-Semitism and to stand up for the state of Israel. And let me say, because INS is, is based in Israel, that one of the great things President Trump has done is send Ambassador David Friedman to Israel to represent America, um, the best ambassador we've ever had in Jerusalem, an ambassador who, the best ambassador we've ever had in Israel, and now our ambassador in Jerusalem, who has been so effective in, uh, in strengthening the U.S.-Israel alliance. And so, so yes, the, the United States is the most philo-Semitic country ever, led by the most philo-Semitic team ever, but I will say, anti-Semitism is rising everywhere in the world. It's rising in Europe. It's rising in the Americas. And yes, it's rising right here in the United States. And that's why it's so critical that we confront this and we bring to bear the full tools of the administration in fighting Jew hatred wherever it comes from and, uh, and wherever it finds itself. You mentioned IRA earlier in when you gave a general analysis of, of what you do in your position and we know about IRA, about the importance of IRA, about its contribution, but we also know that IRA, at least in some places, is disputed. The definition of anti-Semitism is disputed and you also mentioned when you, when you in, in answer to my first questions, the different streams of anti-Semitism. 
Also, very recently, I read uh, one of the headlines in uh, the Algeminer that uh, said that uh, the US State Department, they related to your office, is working to counter anti-Semitic BDS. And when they said anti-Semitic, they put it in parenthesis. So we all know that the issue of what is anti-Semitism is, is very much dis, um, uh, disputed and politicized as well. So my question is, do you agree with me that anti-Semitism has been indeed politicized? And do you think, and if so, do you think it negatively impacts your ability as envoy and in general, the ability to counter anti-Semitism? Yeah, so the reason why the IRA definition of anti-Semitism is so important is because it takes politics out of it. When you have a standard accepted, non-controversial, which it is in almost every case, definition of what anti-Semitism is, it allows us all to have a common reference. And that's why it's so important. Of course, I would agree that politicizing anti-Semitism is, is incredibly destructive. I will say that I've been absolutely militant in, focused on, in focusing on the fact that anti-Semitism comes from three disparate, different ideological sources, sources yet that find common purpose in Jew hatred. That's the ethnic supremacists of the far right, the radical left that usually focuses on Zionism in Israel and militant Islam. And it is incredibly important that we not politicize that and that we not minimize or ignore any of the three sources. By the way, why would we do that? If we're serious about fighting Jew hatred, you have to fight all Jew hatred. And as I say it, you know, if you leave one third of a tumor untreated, the patient doesn't do well. So if you're serious about the patient and about, and about addressing the problem, you've got to fight all forms of it. And that has been our mantra from day one when I took office. And I'm thankful to say that I think, I think one of our great successes has been to, to drive that message. You know, I hear very, very few organizations or leaders today, even those who have very clear ideological leanings, talk about anti-Semitism coming from one source only. I used to hear that a lot more. I don't hear that anymore. And now I hear from leaders and from civic society, from NGOs, all over the political spectrum, other than on the fringe margins, all say anti-Semitism comes from three places, far right, radical left, militant Islam. That's really now the standard operating procedure of, of uh, leaders and organizations that deal with this. And I think that's that's been um, one of the great uh, successes of our messaging, and, and that's the right thing to do. And so it's very important we not politicize it. It's very important we fight all forms of Jew hatred. I imagine you need to make a distinction between the different types because you, I suppose, need to develop different tools to address the, the different types of anti-Semitism. Sure. Sure. You know, there are differences, but, you know, it's important to remember that that while there are differences, there is so much cooperation. It's not only ideological union of the three, now it's actually cooperation. I mean, I'll give you some examples. You know, the, the, the far left form of anti-Semitism finds its greatest expressions on college campuses, right? Well, now we're seeing far right movements that are, have moved in to college campuses and are operating on college campuses to drive anti-Semitic messaging. Um, uh, lo and behold, the, the radical left uh, anti-Semites are giving them a safe space and are tolerating far-right groups. Now, you think, how could they possibly tolerate that kind of invasion into their domain? Well, they do, as long as the far-right groups stay to, the, you know, to the, the radical talking points about you know, how evil Zionism is and how evil Israel is, they're allowed to operate. So here we see cooperation. Another example, very recently, the Department of Justice announced indictments of, of several far-right activists who were supporting Hamas. Now, again, how, how would that come about? That you have far-right uh, anti-Semites working together with, with militant Islam? I mean, it's night and day different. Well, yes, but they, you know, these, these uh, organizations have come together to work, to work together. And so, yes, we have to develop different tools. We have to know in any particular situation, an example, uh, what its source is and, and what its development is. We have to bring to bear the proper tools. But it's very important to remember that 
You know, Jew hatred is Jew hatred. We're seeing it all over the world. It's global. The reach is global. And we've got to confront it everywhere and anywhere and regardless of the ideological clothing it wears. I would imagine that this kind of cooperation or linkage between the left and the right, uh, I would imagine it's quite surprising. So maybe this leads me perhaps to my next question of, you're almost concluding two years in this role. What would you say is the biggest surprise that you encountered in this role in dealing so head on with anti-Semitism worldwide? Well, I, I think the biggest surprise is a good surprise. Uh, and, and that is uh, the happy discovery that we have so many great allies and great partners in this fight. I have the immense, privilege and honor of working with them every day. And these are leaders at all levels, from heads of government to ministers to parliamentarians to anti-Semitism coordinators appointed to deal with this issue. And they are tremendous. These are, these are real warriors who are fighting anti-Semitism in their countries and around the world. And they are doing it because they understand that this is the fight of our times, one of the, one of the most important epic battles of our generation. Because Jew hatred is not only a threat to Jews. President Trump, every time he speaks about anti-Semitism, calls it the vile poison of anti-Semitism. And that is an apt description. Because anti-Semitism truly is history's greatest barometer of human suffering. And every society that has imbibed the vile poison has been destroyed by it. And so really, we are fighting not only to protect Jews, but we're fighting really for the the future of our civilizations and for our societies. And these great foreign leaders understand it and I work with them every day and they have made a difference. They're promoting training for law enforcement officers, the adoption of IRA. They're fighting anti-Semitic movements. They're, they're outlawing, you know, they're designating Hezbollah as a terrorist organization. They're voting that BDS is anti-Semitism, which by the way, the German Bundestag, the Austrian National Parliament, both voted that BDS is anti-Semitism. And in fact, in some of those resolutions, it says that not only is it anti-Semitism, it's, it's, it's reminiscent of the Juden boycotts of the 1930s. I mean, when Germany says that BDS, the idea that you shouldn't buy from the one Jewish state, that this is really a, a repackaging of, you know, of the Kauft nicht bei Juden, uh, uh, you know, mottos that we've seen and, you know, the brown shirts holding signs in front of shops. That is incredibly powerful. And you can't underestimate the power of decisions like that. When in the UK, thanks to, in part to the great work of, of my counterparts, Lords John Mann and Eric Pickles, who are, who are incredible champions of the Jewish people and, and the fight against anti-Semitism, when the UK rejects a major party in the country because it had embraced anti-Semitism, resoundingly, overwhelmingly, rejecting it at the polls, and when ordinary Brits surveyed in exit polls said that one of the reasons they voted the way they voted is because they, they said, we, we don't want anti-Semitism in our country. We don't want that kind of England for our future. That is incredibly important. It's transformative. And so my biggest surprise is exactly that, the number of allies and partners who work with us every day, who really get it, who are not just friends, they're champions of this cause. They're absolute champions of the fight. And that's why I'm just so optimistic about our ability to roll this scourge back. As you speak, I'm thinking, wow, this is so uplifting. And it would have been wonderful to end the interview here, but I am going to squeeze in <laughs> one more question because uh, I do want to try and, and uh, introduce some uh, a complexity that we have here. And this issue is very complex. When we speak about anti-Semitism, we're speaking about uh, a phenomenon that affects Jews worldwide. Israel is the homeland of the Jewish people. But does Israel have a role in countering anti-Semitism, which is outside of Israel's borders? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, Israel has a role for both reasons. First of all, because as the Jewish collective, as the Jewish state, Israel is a prime target. <clears throat> I would say an a, a enormous percentage of anti-Semitism in the world focuses on Israel and focuses on Jewish national self-determination, right? Zionism, uh, which produced the state of Israel. And so Israel has a role to play because Israel is one of the absolute prime targets 
of Jew hatred in the world. But second of all, because Israel is the sovereign state of the Jewish people, well, of course Israel has a role to play in fighting Jew hatred around the world. And it plays an outstanding role. I can tell you that, that in my work, I work hand in hand, shoulder to shoulder, arm in arm, with three separate ministries. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Diaspora Affairs, and the Ministry of Strategic Affairs. All three ministries do incredibly important work and have done really, I would say, I would say transform, have, have led transformative efforts in this regard. And so absolutely Israel has a role to play and, and a major central role to play in partnership with, with us. And, uh, and I, I have no doubt that Israel will continue to play that vital role in combating Jew hatred around the world. Special Envoy Elon Carr, I want to thank you so much for this interview, for your insights, you. for your in-depth and eloquent answers. And I really appreciate, maybe not only on behalf of myself, of INSS, of the Jewish people, of the State of Israel, thank you so much for your work, for your dedication, your commitment, and your everyday battle to, to rid the world of anti-Semitism and make this a better place for all of us, not only Jews, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you. It's an thank honor you. and a privilege to do it. And it's an honor and a privilege to serve an administration so focused on this fight. It's a wonderful pleasure to be with you today. And thank you for all that you, that you do. And uh, may you go from strength to strength and keep doing it. Shana Tova. Shana Tova. Shana Tova to our listeners, to our viewers. Take care and log on to the INSS website for more podcasts.